Can you tell me a little bit about the the platform of your new party? How does this differ from the Workers' Party that you were associated with for so long? Well, it differs substantially. Even when I was in the Workers' Party, after I was first elected to Parliament in 1981, uh, I then voiced my complete dissatisfaction with the way Singapore was being run or managed by the PAP. Mm -hmm. And I said the system had to go and a new system had to come into place. And um, that's why Lee uh, said I had to be destroyed mm -hmm. more than once. But uh, the Workers' Party, uh, the, the other members of the council, particularly two or three of them, weren't very happy about, you know, my stance and um, and for other reasons as well I quit the Workers Party. How were they unhappy with your stance? Well even today you know they take the attitude that um, the system is all right the present system for me it isn't all right they take the system and all is needed is a bit of little you know, improvement here and there. Um, to me, um, it's got to be a clean operation. So they're more like the docile opposition parliament members uh, who are often praised by the PAP. That's right, yes. <laughs> uh, well, you said it. Well, uh, that's why Lee has said that um, they would accept Lo Tia Kiang mm -hmm. and Cham Si Tong. And I think he said once or twice that it's because they are not against the system. Right. Whereas Jared Nam is. And that's why Jared Nam has to be destroyed. So, uh, so after I came out of bankruptcy, I decided to form a new party. Our statement is that with the present system, you know, it's, it's because of the present system that we've got uh, this great inequality mm. between the rich and the poor and um, we've got people you know our citizens denied of their fundamental rights what, and what rights in particular do you see are, are being well even economic rights mm. I, mean, I, mean, you know, I mustn't be accused of talking always about political rights freedom of speech but even economic rights. I mean, take the case of the taxi driver. A single person, individual, can't own a taxi here. Yeah. Uh, I want to see an end to that. I want to see, you know, economic freedom for the ordinary man. What is your opinion of the campaign of civil disobedience that Jason Drone has been waging against the government? Certainly, you know, I think civil disobedience has a place. And as I told the foreign correspondents at the lunch last on the 31st of July, I suppose there might have to come a time when, if the government is not prepared to listen, you know, to our peaceful uh, protests, there must come a time when we have to resort to civil disobedience. Um, I, do, uh, I myself have not against it, mm. but I, as I said, you know, I didn't think um, uh, the time has yet come for that. Mm. Before you can effectively, mm. you know, launch a disobedience campaign, You've got to educate the people. You've got to get them ready to participate in it. And that is just not possible today in Singapore because of the fear that grips Singaporeans. They say, yes, all right, if we come and participate in this civil disobedience, 
what is going to happen to us? Aren't we going to be all arrested and cut it off to the courts and then put into prison? So um, that is the main uh, stumbling block to launching any uh, civil disobedience campaign in Singapore. We've got to get, educate the people and this is as I said twice over the press conferences, you know, we've got to educate Singaporeans of the, of the, of what they are able to do, mm. you see. A lot of them are completely uh, ignorant or oblivious of what they as citizens can do in Singapore. See, I, you get the, I get the message all the time. We can't do anything. We can't do anything. And I said, that's nonsense. I but, mean, if, if the people can't do anything, then what's going to happen to the country? But you, it is somewhat understandable why they might think that, given what's happened to you and, and to others. Yeah, exactly. This is what I've said earlier. It's the fear, if not being sent to prison, of being completely victimized, losing their jobs or whatever they have, even perhaps being thrown out of the HDB apartments. Say, well, housing has become a political tool, like so many other things in Singapore. Or being um, audited by the uh, Revenue Service. Yeah. Do you think that the opposition will have a large role to play in terms of reforming the government after after Lee dies? Well, I've said it, we don't have to wait for Lee to die. And um, this is my hope for the Reform Party. Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Ben Social Club. Hello, I'm City Boy. And I hope all of you will give me your support by subscribing to Ben Social Club. Why? Because Ben Social Club is a platform for ordinary folks like us, all of us, so that our voices can be heard. Yeah. We may not be well spoken, but we speak from our, our hearts. So let us all support YouTube channel Ben Social Club. Thank you.